I'm Rex Allen, and I'm a cowboy. In my travels around this country of ours for the past 20 years, I've run into some of the finest stories about the West, about the people who sweat blood and tears to forge out a way of life out here. They're stories about real people, and I think you're going to enjoy seeing some of them. Today, you're going to hear a story about an 87-year-old youngster who still lives and who still works in this, the everlasting West. This is the land of Fred Martin, 105 square miles of cow ranch, lying in the Guinness Mountains of South Central New Mexico. High rolling desert grassland and rugged hills where you can see over 100 miles in every direction. Legs and feet that fill these shaps and boots will soon be 88 years old. And Fred Martin runs this ranch pretty much as he did 50 years ago. Soon after daylight, the horses are gathered and the remuda is brought into the home place. So each ah. cowboy can choose his mount for the day's work. Hold back, can I? to see four generations of Martins at work and play, and it's all for real. Fred Martin has busted Bronx, fought blizzards, gone hungry, been drunk, and matched wits with the law from up in the cold winds of Canada to the searing sun of Mexico. He made a lot of hay out of the grass that grew under other cowboys' feet. Still heft this 70 pound saddle on the back of his horse. I guess because he's done it every morning of his long life. Boog 
Martin, the oldest son, talks over the coming day's work with his dad. Clint Martin, the oldest grandson, tells Ray Vigil his brown horse resents the saddle this particular morning. Show's over. Let you boys patch up this water cap a little bit, then we'll go meet this red rock tank. All right. Okay. Give me your pinchers. Pinchers, yeah. Okay, we'll meet you at Red Rock. This barbed wire stretched across the wash is called a water gap. They're often washed out in flood time. And unless they're fixed, cattle can wander across them at will. They stray off, and uh, sometimes somebody steals them. Oh, yeah, reach. Oh, the bottom was broke. Try to pop them now, yeah. grunt little Prince. <laughs> Push it a little more. Yeah. 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 See that one? Stand up. Yeah. Let's go. One of these cows seems to be choking. If she has something lodged in her throat, it must be removed or she'll quit eating and die. The cowboys are going to have to rope her and check it out. Mr. Martin said, I sure don't regret growing old. It's a privilege so many folks don't have. He said, I've had more trouble with myself than anyone else I ever met.
They must constantly check the windmills, the life giver of the land. Martin Bunch rides small across the top of Tewa Mesa. This vast, lonesome land swallows them. Ask Mr. Martin to tell us about his early childhood. My mother died when I was born, and, uh, and my daddy died when I was 12. And my uncle closed out that out on the Pecos and took me back to Texas to go to school, you know, going to send me to school. And I got outlawed down there and stole the horse and was on the Dodge for the next 40 years, you know, for my uncle. <laughs> Shit rolled off. Did you work any? Yeah, I, I worked on the on the blood in the res, reservation out of Pie Pot for a little while. Worked one summer for Ferris, Ironside, and Richards. Was up there. What did the border look like then? Hell, I never knew when I got in Canada, and I never had a passport, and I got to Canada, and I never had one when I left. visit from Butch Cassidy. Now, I noticed when he come in, he kind of sat down sideways in his chair like that, you know, and put his arm up on the back of it. Well, I never thought nothing about it, and I'd eat up all the bread. I had to make some bread, you know, to feed him. And I had some beans and beef and stuff cooked about all I had. And anyway, I was fixing him something to eat, and when he got through eating, he'd come up to the table and, and uh, when he got through eating, had them 10 dishes and things like that, and I started to wash the dishes, and he got up and got a cup towel, and and, uh, and uh, he said to me, he said, did you ever perform an operation on anybody and me, just a big old kid? I said, hell no, I don't look like a doctor to you, do I? And nobody said, I got a bullet in my hiney here, and it's got to come out, he said. So the next morning, he, but it, come we put a tea kettle on with some hot water in it and put a lot of salt and stuff in it. Says, you got any medicine? I said, yes, sir. Somebody left some Vicks here last winter sometime, and part of a bottle of Vicks here, I said. And that's all the best there was in that camp, too. And uh, anyway, I hit that water, and he got down and uh, told me he sharpened his knife a little bit, and asked me if I had a wet rock, and I did this one night. Sharpened his knife, told me to just cut that place open in the fat part of his hiney there and dig that bullet out. Well, soon as it wasn't cutting on it, it went to bleeding and it looked terrible anyway to me, you know. And I wound up with a, an old two-pronged meat fork. I bet one of them prongs back and finally tied that bullet out of his hiney. Just got in and just kept it gouging. He'd grunt, you know, and he'd say, God damn, you'd be a good potato digger. He'd tell me once in a while. Well, I finally got it out. And heck when I felt so I went off down to Mexico. That's how I got in Mexico, you see. That's when I got in jail down there. We brought one herd out, you know, and if we were getting cut in on these, on these, these cattle we brought out, you know. And so anyway, we brought one herd out, but the next the king got killed and I got in jail, you see. How long did they keep you in that jail down there? Well, it was in early spring. Long in May to the latter part of September. What happened after that? Uh, we joined the old Bill, made us a good talk. See, we was in that jail and they were going to Dobie Wallace. They were going to stop that, them kind of guys from going into Mexico and doing things like that, you know. And, and uh, he made a nice little talk in Spanish, of course. And he said that... Uh, Who was this? Old Pancho Villa. 
And uh, he told all them people that's in there, I guess there's 200 of them all told, and uh, Mexicans and Gringos and everything else is in there. They enlisted in his army and fight for his cause, and he turned around to us Gringos, we was kind of bunched up on one side a little bit, and he said, you guys get back, uh, get back to your own country the best you can, you see. If you don't enlist in the army, and so there's an old boy standing there, and I said to him, named George Dean, I said, uh, what do you think about being a VIA soldier? He said, damn sure beats adobe walls with me. So that, uh, that's, how, uh, that's how come he in his army. How long were you there? Oh, I was there till it was in October, that fall. Then you came north again. Yeah, I'd, uh, I, I was under General Alvarez, old Henry Alvarez, you see. And when they captured Alvo Prieta there, south of Douglas, you know, that I crossed the line. And I got back into the United States there. I rode one of his horses off, you know. Hello, Charlie. Do you read me over? Yeah, I just thought I'd call you and see if you got those cable clamps all right. Oh, you did? Well, that's good. Did you, did you get that uh, Babbitt? Yeah. Well, that, that, that's good. I guess that DH's ready to go then. Over. Well, you just put in a new gasket. Oh, well, that's good. Ask him how it surely may is. Oh, <laughs> Charlie? This old button here wants to know how Shirley May is. Oh, oh, she is. Waiting impatiently. Well, we'll see you, Charlie. Over and out. Eight four five eight clear. Get it. Ooga, I notice you handled your end of this ranching activities pretty much in the modern manner. How's your old daddy feel about that? Well, he don't go along with me on everything, Rex, but... Uh, <laughs> How's he feel about this brush control? As long as I put it in these ditches, he likes it fine. And he likes it pretty good when we start gathering cattle. You, you can see the horse you're riding at least. See that it helps a little. Let's see that it helps a little bit. <laughs> Get him out of these hills a little easier. Let's go look at some of it. All right, we'll have to go down this way. All right. The Martins say, take care of the earth, and it'll take care of you. This ditch was 20 feet deep until Boog blocked it with brush. Now the scar is almost healed. Boog has built over 70 of these diversion tanks to check the erosion of roaring floods and trap water for the parched throats of the livestock. To man and beast, this liquid is life. All, as always. You drive. Once in a while, the Martin bunch just have to go to town for supplies and a little socializing. Dusty road sure does make a feller thirsty. Magdalena, the cowboy's oasis. Forty miles 
a dusty road sure does make a feller thirsty. Okay. You talk to him. So tell me some more about your what you did when, when you first came out here. Oh, I was the first little old boy you ever seen. In the, in the, I got a job. You know, I was a throat carrier, you know. When I first came to Magdalena, right across the street, there used to be a, a big hotel and a bar there. Well, you know, I bought my horse in the lever stable, and I slept over there. I told you and I had a dime in my pocket that was mine. A dime? A dime. We and were and I had an old pistol. I was trying to hock it for enough money to get my horse out of the lever stable the next morning. I had two horses. That's all it took for a dime? No. I was trying to hock my pistol for enough money to get him out of hock. Who, uh, tell me, did you ever well, see any of these stagecoach robberies or anything uh, like that? Nest? I <laughs> never had nerve enough to rob a chicken nest, much less a stagecoach. <laughs> oh, come well, on now, come on, friend. Just tell us the truth. <laughs> I sure did. I sure did. <laughs> How about the moonlight rides? No, I never had any of them either. Oh, now, come on. You're not telling me the truth. Oh, I am, dude. Look up, Hello, boy, friend. Back now, you're looking all right. Get out! Folks, you've just seen the Magdalena Country Club. Yeah, well, I don't know what kind of shape he's in. Too good a shape. Oh, get hooked. Well, I don't know. The party ain't over yet. Come on. Let's get hooked. All right, see. You'll be okay in the morning. Go around, Ray. Hi, Velma. Got him? Got him? Should have been worse, sis. We had a pretty good time. There you are, Fred. Get up. Watch that step. It's a long one. There you go. Well, I'm going to bed. I'm with you, pal. Let's go. Can you make it dark, Velma? <laughs> but when I got to Clayton with them two good horses, where there's a... Automobile outfit in there and now was a big old liver state belongs to an old fellow by the name of Cook. And he said them sure good looking horses they was. Two big nice horses. And uh, he said, Where'd you get them? And I was kind of smart like too, you know. I said, Oh hell, it don't make any difference where I got them just as long as I got them to him, you know. Next thing I knew I was in jail for stealing horses, you see. The rest of the captain said for two hours, and I'd score jail. That was my induction to score. And they turned me out, and then I go back over to the liver stable, and I catch it from my bed horse and put my little camp bed on him, you know, in the outfit. And then I led this other one out, and I just played Billy the Kid. I just got on him, you know. That old man, he kept telling me, said, you ain't paid your liver bill, that. I just played Billy the Kid. I motioned him over on one side of this pistol. I'll come on to my leader, did nobody bother me. But you know, the thought occurred to me that out of all this talking and stuff we've done, we never have said a word about Mrs. Martin. Would, you like, to, yeah. would you like to see a picture of her? You better would. Have you got one? Yes, sir. I'll tell you what, we've enjoyed it. I hope we haven't uh, ruined the operation here at the ranch for the next 10 years. <laughs> Been a real pleasure. <laughs> but Hell, I've got a lot of work to do yet, you know. <laughs> well, I think uh, you're going to live to be 150. You'll have time to do it. What do you got there? Hey, isn't that pretty? She was a, was a beautiful woman. Yes, sister. How long were you married, Mr. Martin? Well, I know what school I might have been. 
We got March from 19 to 19, and she died in 57 in September. They don't make them like Fred Martin anymore, and they never did make very many. <laughs> 